ready to say words, yeah. all of which will be, none of it will be controversial. <laughs> I know this for a fact. What's up, buddy? Hey, we'll be back. What's up? Comfy, I see, huh? I know, yeah. I like this. Good, How you, doing? you? Yeah, I like this whole vibe. Champ already. Are you kidding? Authentic, I don't see no competition yet. Ball on them, baby. Our guest today played 14 seasons in the NBA, won a title in 17, and of course, one of the hosts of All the Smoke. Matt Barnes is here. And can we just. I, the podcast world is crazy, right? Yeah. But you guys have one of the biggest ones. Did you have any idea all the smoke would be like this? No clue. We didn't even know what a <laughs> podcast was, to be honest with you, when we started. We were just both doing Fox and ESPN, and we knew that we can kind of get away with a little bit more uh -huh. from an extracurricular standpoint uh, <laughs> on a podcast. And uh, it was kind of a struck lightning in a bottle when, I had, when Show, someone from Showtime happened to connect the dots and I pitched them our idea and they didn't really know we had, I didn't know we had, but they took a chance and uh, you know, our first year out, we won sports podcast of the year and kind of mm -hmm. cemented us in this space and we've been, uh, you know, and enjoying it and then learning ever since. All those years of you guys being <clears throat> outspoken and saying whatever you wanted. Paid Who off. knew it paid off? Paid off, off. <laughs> paid, off. Pa <laughs> paid off after basketball, yeah, exactly. not during, it cost me during basketball. Yeah, we'll get to that uh, at, so <laughs> at some point. Um, I want to start with a guy who I think he thinks he can get away with a little more than he probably can, but John Morant. We had the Adam Silver announcement um, that he's not going to make an announcement until after the finals about what's going to happen. Was it a good move the way Adam handled, handled it? And <clears throat> what kind of a suspension are you thinking? I think they should have just kept the information to themselves <laughs> because they knew they weren't going to announce it and they had the world buzzing because they said they didn't want to distract the finals. But now we're still buzzing because we're like, <laughs> what's the deal? If he's going to hold off and announcing, it's got to be a huge suspension. So I think they should have kept it to themselves. <clears throat> On the flip side with Morant, I mean, image is everything. You know what I mean? And I think these young kids, we can't really speak to what it's like feeling like you have to show every moment of your life on social media so people can validate you, stamp you, and give you likes. Uh, my whole thing is, I'm not for playing with guns, but if you know you guys like to play with guns, stop filming yourself. Like, they're telling on themselves every single time. Right. So I don't get, like, why you keep telling on yourself? So I think the reason why this punishment has to be so harsh with Ja is because he's, he's the next guy to kind of carry the NBA from an American standpoint. You know what I mean? They're the, 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 the European international players have dominated the MVPs and, you know, they got a handful of those guys in the top five right now. Mm -hmm. But Ja is along with Tatum and Booker and some of these younger guys that are supposed to carry the torch after KD, Steph and LeBron leave. So I think he has to understand the bigger picture of what is being asked of him. And then also, you know, once you start getting these shoe deals and these big drink deals, like you have to just walk a little different. So. I wish the best for him because we all know he's such a tremendous talent and he's must-see basketball, but I also think he needs to learn a lesson and, 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 and unfortunately this time I think it's going to be harsh, but I think he'll learn this time around. It's like Matt said, he's <clears throat> built up as one of the marquee athletes in this league. He has yeah. the Nike deal. He's the power, well, he doesn't have the power deal anymore. Do they take it? <laughs> Yeah, they took that away. He, he's uh, he, he's one of the you know NBA's putting him on their marquee. They're they're marketing that team, a small market team, for primetime games and, and on network games. He has that responsibility. I know he's only 23 years old, but he has to understand what that is. And like you said, we only know about this stuff because he showed us. <laughs> we wouldn't have known about any of this unless he showed us. The only thing we got to see that we weren't supposed to see was when the strip club. Like the pitcher right. Oops. doing, right. and that's what strip clubs look like. And, that was, and that was kind of cool. Yeah, you know that was I mean? like kind of fly. Man, like, he made yeah. rain in there. Yeah. But outside of that, like we should have never, like you said, we should have never known anything else. Yeah. So we only know what they showed us, and whether on accident or purpose or however you want to say it. So he could have prevented all this. He had a plenty of reasons to do it, and he, he chose not to. So and now, that's what he's going to get. He's got. The problem is it's the second time, right? Like you do it once, and I thought the suspension was a little lenient in the beginning. Like eight games wasn't that yeah. big of a deal. And with everything, how sensitive the world is to this, again, it's all self-inflicted. It's, it's, and so I'm hoping he's taking this time to kind of, you know, find himself and get his <laughs> smaller circle and find people he can actually trust and rock with and enjoy this life. People would do oh, unimaginable uh, uh, things to be in the position you're in. Things. Don't ruin that. Like, <laughs> and you, just, you know what I mean? By the way, I worry too, though, if, if he is suspended an entire season, if and he doesn't truly get it, 
that's a lot of idle time for a guy who doesn't seem to handle idle time. As sad as it is, it could be the worst it thing be. for him to suspend know. him for the whole year to give him all that time on his hands with the people that he surrounds himself with. So I think it's going to be extreme. I think it's going to be close to 50 games. I don't think it's going to be a whole season. I don't think so either. I think it too, it goes back to something that I've talked about for a while. It's just there's no veterans in the locker room anymore. You know, when I, we came in the league, I had vets that were 38, 39, 40. Some played, but most of them just contributed to the culture and, and hmm. learning and teaching. And although Steven Adams is a veteran, I guess he wasn't enough to kind of get through these guys. But there were guys when I came in the league that would put you in a headlock or, or, or do some, <laughs> do some other more. stuff to you. Like, yo, you got to, you know, you, you, you have a tremendous opportunity right now. But go ahead. I saw Sam. Yeah, yeah, Steven Adams, I mean, you, you made a great point. He spoke up a week before the, a couple weeks before the Denver yeah. Nuggets situ uh, in the situation in Denver happened. <clears throat> so if you were a teammate of John Morant, What's your like direct message to him? Yeah, I, would, I would probably sit. <laughs> yeah, sure. no, I'd probably sit him down and and and, and roll a little joint and uh, <laughs> like, let's talk about this. You know, because like honestly, it sometimes it really just takes to show that you care. Sometimes you can't just talk down and talk mm. at people. You have to go down to their level and bring them up with you. So I think it's just really showing them that you care, sitting down, having a conversation with them. And almost if it doesn't get through initially, just staying on them because under, making him understand how important he is to this team and to this game. You have a good point about the vets too because nowadays it's who makes the most money, who scores the most points, but it wasn't like that back no. in the day. Like if, if I would do this back in the day or James Harden do this in Houston, like Marcus Camby, yeah. Sam Down, these yeah. guys were on yeah. your head to fix it and to address it right away. Steven Adams, as much as a good leader and a good dude he is, he has no juice, he has no say over yeah. John Morant's actions. Fair. So it's, it's, it's different now. It's a different time, it's a different era, and the best player does what he wants. So, Matt, you want to ring with the Warriors? Yes. Bob Myers just stepped down Man. as president and GM. How do you think that's going to impact him as an organization? That's going to be huge. I mean, Bob's been one of the most impactful front office guys for the last 10 years. Um, and I think sometimes stuff just runs its course. I mean, being on a championship team, but then being on a, a part of a dynasty where every year the expectations are championship or nothing, uh, and he helped build that. So I just think he needed some time off. Um, you know, I heard some, and I can't confirm this stuff, and it wasn't from him, that, you know, just the ownership was kind of overstepping you know, their bounds, and I don't know if ownership actually has bounds because it is their team, uh, <laughs> but I heard, you know, I heard that. So I think it's a standpoint where Bob's gonna take a step back. Um, I honestly thought that if Palinka didn't, you know, make the moves he made and the Lakers didn't make a run, mm -hmm. it was gonna be a smooth transition for Bob to come back home and move into the Lakers front office. Uh, but I think to, to, to credit, uh, excuse me, uh, Bob to come back and, and move into the Lakers front office. But to credit Rob, he did a great job at the trade deadline. The Lakers made this Western Conference final run, so I think he kind of secured his situation. So I see Bob sitting back and waiting for a great opportunity. And someone's going to throw a ton of money at him, and once he's rested and back home with the kids all the time and be like, oh, I think I need to get back <laughs> on the road, I think Bob is going to make a move, and, and wherever he ends up going is going to be a, a huge plus to that organization. I'll, I'll say this. As good of a job that is, I, I don't want to replace yeah. Bob oh. Myers, right? Like, Tough. everything he's done, and, and he's kind of getting out at the right moment. They're kind of on the decline. Is the era over? Is yeah. the dynasty over? Not only are those the questions, but whoever replaces him has huge decisions to make that impact kind of the future of, of this whole organization. Mm -hmm. So whether it's Mike Dunleavy or whoever it is, that, that they're really, really, really big shoes to fill. And this guy, this, this guy did an unbelievable job. I feel like half this show is Chandler telling us jobs he doesn't want to do. Yeah. <laughs> like, well, well, the way these coaches are getting paid now, yeah, I might right. start that That's one. serious. <laughs> start thinking about it. I think Jesus. the one thing that Bob, I'm guessing, uh, got through to ownership before he left was the importance of keeping this core intact. I think mm. understanding that it's important to re-sign Draymond. Um, you know, again, he's a guy that doesn't have his numbers drop off the page, but playing with him and playing against him for so long, he is the heart and soul of that team, and I think everybody knows that. Steph, Clay know that, and I know they've been advocating for him. So to be able to keep that core together, I think, <laughs> was Bob's last goal, and then now he's chilling. Well, I mean, from the outside looking in, it, it, it looks like they're almost forced to pick Draymond, Jordan Poole. Like, what, what do you think they should do going forward? You said you want them to keep Draymond. Did they, you sit them down? You try to work it out? I don't know if that can be, you know, I actually had a, I, I was doing the Kings um, Warrior Series in Sacramento, and I got a chance to sit down and, and fellowship with Draymond after one of the games. Since You like that word, right? Wow, that, 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 can, that can mean a lot of different things. Um, and he told me, he's just like, you know, I lost my voice almost until February in that locker room. And he said, I, I saw a lot of slippage, but I wasn't really in a position to kind of put my foot down and be myself and kind of organize things. And he said, by the time he felt comfortable to do that, it was February. So that was a lot of bad habits that kind of went awry for 
almost a, you know, three quarters of the season, and it was a little too late to, you know, kind of fix it once, um, you know, stuff hit the fan come playoff time. I wasn't worried. Obviously, you would like to see Jordan Poole play better. He was given a lot of money, and he was great in last year's playoffs. You would like to see him better, but I wasn't necessarily watching that, and I think Chandler can attest to that. We watch body language and the way he blew off Draymond and the way he wouldn't look at Steph when Steph was talking. You're, I mean, you're dealing with Hall of Famers. Mm -hmm. And although, like I said, I don't know what their relationship is and if it can ever be repaired with Draymond, but at least pretend you're listening at some <laughs> point. And I just think he's one of those younger players that, you know, he got a lot of money, uh, played very well for that money, but the next year he didn't come out and perform. So I wouldn't be surprised if, you know, they could possibly be shopping him, which mm -hmm. is crazy because to think, because two years ago you were thinking, hey, this is the guy we're going to hand the torch to, right. to, to, yep. to, to run with. I just look at it like, that. too, like, if, if you're Jordan Poole, can, is that something you can get over? Like, you do punching you in the face and the whole world <sighs> see it. It wasn't as bad, right, hearing it, but when you see the video, you're yeah. embarrassed. And, 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 and Chandler, you know, like, stuff like this happens all the time. But, ag again, like, the strip club thing, like, this should have never got leaked. Yeah. yeah. Like, to me, they need to find out whoever leaked that and out that person because this should have never got leaked. And I think what meant, obviously, getting punched in the face and knocked out is messed up. I don't know what that's like. I don't ever want to know what that's <laughs> like. Um, but I think just having to deal with that every single single day your family sees it your friends see that and then you have to go to work and try to mend this because now there's memes and all this other BS that comes with it I think if it would have stayed under wraps it possibly and then this again this is a speculation could have been a little bit easier to deal with but I don't know if there is any mending that but to me you just have to have a line of respect from a standpoint and when we're on that court it's a common goal yeah that's crazy you're right he's with these guys you think he would at least I mean, Steph was not happy in that no. moment. Well, That's even him, he needs to be aware that there's cameras everywhere. Even if this was something that wasn't his fault or whatever, you got to know what this looks like. And at this moment, this magnitude of the game, uh, you, you can't be doing this. In fairness, though, there was the moment where Anthony Davis sort of looked like he wasn't into the LeBron James yeah. celebration game. Like, sometimes you just forget, yeah. really, even in this day and age. Well, yeah, we film everybody all day. All We're going to see some funny stuff. Yeah. I, it, it's crazy for Jordan Poole because if you're him, you're sitting there like the organization leaked it. They seemingly took Draymond's sure. side. They're thinking about what they're doing. He's got to feel the walls closing in, so it has to be a frustrating situation. Maybe it is something they can sit down and iron out, but mm. I don't know. It looks worse by the day. He, yeah. Steve Kerr's doing Draymond's pot. Like, I know. He looks like an outsider. Sides have been chosen. He looks yeah. like an outsider. For sure. Um, so Shams is reporting that Kyrie trying to recruit LeBron Ooh. to Dallas. Thoughts on that, the validity of it, the idea of them playing together again. What are his intentions here? I just don't see it happening. I think LeBron has set up stake in California with several houses. And, <laughs> um, you know, his son going to USC now, uh, his kids getting a little bit older. I don't see him uprooting the family for one year mm -mm. because you got to think Bronny's all intentions to be in, in two years for Bronny to be in the league. And, and Bron's goal was to play with his son so I think it's wishful thinking um, by Kyrie I think the Lakers came out and kind of said hey if we're sending our big dog your way you're sending back Luca and we all know that's absolutely not happening <laughs> amazing. and then from the flip side if you're the Lakers you saw what happened with Phoenix and it's kind of unfair to kind of judge Phoenix because they only had a handful of games together but they were a very top heavy team with zero depth and that just doesn't work anymore so if the Lakers were to go all in on Kyrie you're giving away a lot of young core pieces that came in and, and really complemented your two stars really well so I, as much as I would love to see LeBron and Kyrie get back together because I think LeBron is the one vet that can kind of get Kyrie just to focus on basketball. Mm. And if that does happen and Kyrie is able to get with him, and we'll forget, because stuff happens so much, we'll forget about all the BS he pulled the last five or six years mm -hmm. if he's able to get with LeBron <clears throat> and somehow win something. And I don't know where that would be, but because we're in such a what have you done for me lately. So, I mean, I think he understands getting with LeBron will kind of help fix his trajectory and his legacy because it's it's been a little checkered <coughs> when it comes to <laughs> playing basketball, to say the least. So, um, again, I think wishful thinking, but I just don't see it happening. It's crazy that these clips they're showing, this is seven <clears throat> years ago. It's been like a it lifetime since like we it. saw that Kyrie. Yeah. yeah. So, <clears throat> And, I mean, there's no doubting his, his an unbelievable talent, a, a top five talent, and, you know, arguably one of the greatest ball handlers, one of the greatest finishers. I mean, when this guy is just focused on basketball, there's not you can't name five guys better than him. Yeah. I also think it's like a, it's a chess move, right? It's like Dallas fans, look at me. I'm trying to recruit the best player <laughs> of all times. I'm changed. I'm ready to fully buy in. But yeah. uh, you've gone from a basketball player to a basketball dad. <laughs> oh. And as a new father myself with my first Congrats, boy coming bro. in October, yes, how has that been, you know, coaching? It's know, awesome. Watching your twins. Um, you know, I, uh, you know, they're 14 now, oh, wow. uh, headed into high school. 
And um, it was, to be honest with you, it was the reason why I retired. I signed a three-year deal a year. I happened to get to Golden State and won a championship, and I stepped away because I was just felt like I was missing too much time. And, and as a father, traveling, missing birthdays, plays, sporting events, it started wearing on me. Um, so that was the main reason why I retired. And from the second I retired, it was taking pride in hour and 20 minute round trip school drop offs and <laughs> coaching them in every sport they play. But it was just like th those things you miss as a dad. So fast forward, you know, I coach them now. We have a top five AAU team in the country. Eight. Shout out my little guys. Uh, we're 14 years old. So it's just been a blast to be able to pour into them from a father standpoint, but then also being able to coach them. And, and, and again, being able to coach their, we could be able to keep our core together for like the last five years. So just kind of raising their friends as well. So. Uh, fatherhood is the best job in the world, and it, it's why I've turned down other jobs that, that have been nice, but they wanted me to travel too much. And I just, nothing comes before my kids anymore. So if I'm able to fit in, you know, media, which I am now, it kind of has to go around my children. So there's nothing like fatherhood, and, and, and congratulations on the little man coming, because it's, it, it's a blast, and it's a, it's a journey. Chandler, what if he hates basketball? Oh, he's going to. Okay, sure. fair enough. I just <laughs> want to make he's sure we were mentally to. prepared for that. We're taking a really quick break. We'll be we'll be right back. Matt Barnes not going anywhere. We have a lot more questions. Run it up. Yeah, he's gonna back. Hate Run it up. Run it back. Welcome back. Um, we were talking basketball in the, <laughs> uh, in the break there. <laughs> Matt Barnes still here. I know we want to talk finals, Chandler. Yeah, Matt, let's talk finals. Who right now is in control of this series? Uh, I don't know if anybody's necessarily in control. It's 1-1. I think Miami went in and did their job, but I've been impressed with their confidence. You know, when, when they lost game one and, and, and you saw Jimmy in the podium, it's just like, you know, everyone's smiling, you know, having a good time, understanding we just need four games. So a confident team is, is a very dangerous team. And for them to go in to Denver uh, and make that fourth quarter run and, and pull that one out just showed me a lot. And it, but it, it shouldn't surprise me because they've been doing this since the beginning of the playoffs. You know, they played possum all season, uh, nearly <laughs> getting eliminated in the play-in, and then you run through Milwaukee, Boston, and now you're 1-1 in the finals versus Denver. So um, they feel confident. Uh, with that being said, I just love the chess move between Spolster and Malone, two of the best coaches in the game. And I know that Denver will be ready to do what they need to do tonight uh, to, to, I think, take game three. But I think this is going to be a great series. So, Matt, you had some legendary battles in your day. So your matchup against Jimmy Butler, Ooh. how are you guarding him right uh, now? You know, I, was, I was the lucky guy that you know, got to take the best score every single night. So to <laughs> me, it's, 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 it, it's multiple looks. The one thing I don't like about the game right now is I feel like the primary defender gets switched off too easy. Mm -hmm. Like, they set these fake screens. To me, if you're the guy that's supposed to guard the best player, you're fighting through you screens, fight you're through. going over, you're going under, you're being physical with them, you're giving them different looks. And Chandler will tell you, you know, anytime you get cooking, I have to give you a hard foul. <laughs> it's coming, <laughs> and I got five more strategically hard fouls coming at you. <laughs> but you want to make these guys work. You you know what I mean? I mean, one thing, you know, guarding Kobe was, you know, you know, great scores are always going to be good defense, but you just want to make them work. If, if Kobe or Jimmy or KD were going to score 30 on me, I want you to take 30 shots. I want you to know that I'm going to put you on the ground a couple of times with some hard fouls. If you shot make me too much, I'm going to hard foul you. So it's just kind of sending a message knowing that it's going to be a long night, but, that, you know, great offensive players are going to get what they want. You just want to make them earn it. Um, so that's what I would do with Jimmy. So you were fined 14 times in your career. That's it. Which of I know, right? I feel like that's it's like, actually surprising. It was, for like a, it was for like a half. It was for like a half a million, though. <laughs> <laughs> like, okay, I, like, so that yeah. good. That, now that, I want to know that, which one of those was the one that was money best spent. Do you remember? Oh, man, I was. But I used to get fined for like pushing people. I get I remember I got suspended two <laughs> yeah, games for pushing. You can't do that. Man. Yeah, right. Like at least let me throw a punch. Like I remember I pushed, I pushed Serge Ibaka one time with that Clipper. And, and during that Clipper thing when he used to try to bully Blake, and I think I got like two, a two or three game suspension. Phew. So I think my suspensions and, and fines were more reputation. I don't really think I got any really like, oh, I got him good. I'm, I'm going to take that <laughs> fine. Like mine was talking back. Like and you appealed pushing. to all of them? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> and, and, and Kiki used to, yeah, I'm thinking he's a UCLA guy. He's going to have some leniency. Kiki didn't mess with me at all. <laughs> Kiki was, I'm sorry, Matt, but I missed, you know what I mean? So um, I can't say that any of them are my money well spent. Um, I wouldn't take any of them back because, okay, it, again, it, it, it was who I was. I was just a competitor and, and, and was willing to do anything to win. But I wish I would have got to earn more. Like, at least let me throw a couple punches if you want to suspend me two yeah. or three games. Did you do any that you regret, like trash talking anyone's mom or anything like that, maybe? <laughs> Were you on that team then? <laughs> yeah. 
Hey, that was crazy, man. <laughs> and 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 sending my best to that family and, and, and Mrs. Harden, but she was talking reckless to me. Like she said some things that I was just like, there's no way that's a woman's voice that's saying this to me. And I didn't know who she was. So you know me, and it was so loud. It was during the playoffs. I mouthed something that I probably shouldn't have mouthed. If, if I would have known it was his mom, I probably wouldn't have said what I said. But that was a big one. That was like 50 or 65,000. Wow. That was a big fine. <laughs> That's so much for words. That was a heavy hitter. I, those words were. You were there. Those <laughs> were some darts. Yeah. It was, yeah. It was, what, what, what did this guy say? What did uh, say? Not, <laughs> not, not, not for TV. Yeah. Not go for TV. Imagine so. 50 racks. Not 50 for racks. TV. Uh -uh. <laughs> Heavy. That's expensive. Yeah. <laughs> Someone's mom. Mm. Harden's mom, shout out. She's like yes, in it. No, she got me. She got me. But, you know, after, uh, again, I, I'm someone who lost my mom, have the utmost respect for, for moms and what they go through. I just didn't know who she was. And I was thinking after okay. I said, I'm like, she has to be someone's mom. Because she's, <laughs> cause she's sitting courtside right underneath the hoop. So I'm just like, she late. has to be someone important. But after, you know, it was like I said, yeah, Michelle, it was definitely too late. But I was able to, <laughs> to find her and, and try to apologize. And it took two or three times for her to actually at least shake her head to accept my apology. And I think Mother's Day was right around that time. So I gave her some flowers yeah. too. Oh, that's nice. But uh, yeah, it was, it, was, it was in the heat of the battle, man. And you just, I'm trying to go to war every time. And, and, and if some people get in the way, sometimes they might catch a strike. <laughs> it is crazy, though. Complete side topic. You, people would think they just because they buy a court oh, tickets. Oh, they uh, say whatever the craziest shit to you. Sure. Unbelievable. And it, it, it's getting further, not necessarily on the court side, but just fans in general throwing stuff at players. And when they're walking in the tunnel, like, I don't That's like trash. that. And, and, and my whole thing is don't say nothing to me you wouldn't say to my face right. on the street. Exactly. Mm -hmm. If you have enough balls to say that in my face, I'll respect you. But I know 99% of the time it's because they know that we're kind of in a cage and we can't really do anything. Yeah. So, Man. All right, so your championship <laughs> season, the, the 17 Warriors. I've talked with Kevin about this before. I think mm. it's really tough to see any team beating them. We, we go all over. 96 Bulls, everybody. Uh, so you, is that got to be the most dominant team you've played on, right? Yeah, I mean... I think what, what, what stood out to me the most about that team was how egoless it was. I mean, if you think you're bringing in a rock star coach, you have Steph Curry, you have Klay Thompson, you have Draymond Green, you have Andre Iguodala, you have Sean Livingston, you have David West, and then you bring in arguably the best scorer, peer scorer of our generation, or one of them. Um, and to think that they fit seamlessly. And, and I think that's a, a credit to obviously the Warriors welcoming KD, but just KD in general, because KD has been able to, you know, Go to Brooklyn, fit in seamlessly. Go to Phoenix, fit in seamlessly. And, and it's rare to see someone who can score the ball that well seamlessly fit in. But to, to answer your question, that was a hell of a team, man. And I think it's hard to compare eras from a standpoint of Shaq. There, you know, Shaq was a whole nother. And I, as much as I love Draymond, there was no guard nah, in a Shaq. You know what I mean? So it's just kind of different kind of comparing who would have did this and could they have beat Michael. But this team had guys, three or four guys, they can give you 30 to 40 points any night. And there weren't too many teams in NBA history that can say that. And their chemistry was, was, was crucial. And I think that's what's most important you know, fighting up these up and down battles and, and, and the ebbs and flows of the season. And that team was on one page the entire time. And it's almost why you see, you know, Steve Kerr not necessarily naming no names, but that that locker room is not used to people pouting and mm -hmm. and, and and kind of brushing people off. Like it, it's always been for the betterment of the team. And if these superstars can do it, how do you not do it? So um, that was a hell of a team. Uh, I just wish, you know, I came in that season when KD went down yep. and, you know, played a handful of games and literally the game he came back, I had like the worst ankle sprain of my life going into the playoffs. So I really didn't get a chance to play and that so what kind of what broke my heart was because I was in the mix. I came right in playing, you know, twenty to twenty three minutes a game and I was in that rotation. I'm just like, oh I'm finally here. Like this is it's gonna be a cake <laughs> one. And you know, really literally the game so I never I, I played ten minutes with K D. K D came back uh, I got hurt that game, and 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 that was kind of it. But that team overall was incredible. Yeah, speaking of that, you brought that up. You you once said that you didn't count that as a championship because <sighs> no. you got hurt the week yeah. before. No, I mean, yeah, my whole thing is like, you know, Chandler. I've I've always been someone that never had anything handed to me. I had to grind the entire time, and I, and I and I wouldn't want it any other way because I had such a, an appreciation for the journey. And I finally get to a point where I'm on a team where I have a perfect mm -hmm. role. And I got hurt. You know, I would have been the guy out there guarding Kawhi. I would have been the guy out there guarding LeBron in the finals. And the fact that I couldn't do that because of his bum ankle uh, really hurt me. So it wasn't that I didn't appreciate the ring. I just didn't 
it doesn't like it. It sat in, in it, it sat in its little jar or excuse it's got in its case on, <laughs> on the bookshelf. And I was going to ask that because you didn't want it. I don't wear it. It wasn't that I didn't want it. It's just I just don't count it. And, and the reason why how it got it, it, it's been some crazy story that I didn't want it. What happened was I they they did a special ring ceremony for me and I came back and my kid the twins got rings too, <laughs> and it was in this big old box and I went back and watched the game. So the the, the PR guy Raven Ritter was like, hey, let me put this in this office for you till the game's over. We bounced early. The office was locked, and I'm just like, damn. So it went like almost a year and a half with <laughs> before. Oh my God. Like they delivered it to me somehow on ESPN one day while we were filming. Like they brought the ring, and I That's hadn't awesome. seen it, wasn't really thinking oh, about wow. it. But again, I appreciate just the opportunity and the organization. My favorite organization, and 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 and, and the people there are great. But yeah, I'm I'm someone who needed to earn everything, and I just didn't feel like I earned that. So nonchalant, a year and a half later. Like, yeah, <laughs> right. Get the ring back. Yeah, like, get the ring. I'd be like, I need it like today. Like it's dry cleaning. <laughs> <laughs> now, I'm going to need my 85 I, diamonds. Yeah, yeah. I need it now. Yeah. Um, you, you mentioned that you would want to run for political office maybe at some point. So yeah. Senator Barnes, first yeah. thing you do is what? Um, I, what struck my, uh, my my eye in this was I'm from Sacramento and Kevin Johnson was the mayor. And to me, on, I, at first, it wasn't so much on the political side. It was more just I saw what he did to his former neighborhood. And his former neighborhood... Mm. Murders were happening. My aunt got killed, throat slashed, and left in the gutter in mm. that same neighborhood. So to see what he was able to do in that neighborhood and, and the businesses he was able to bring and kind of the life he brought back into that neighborhood really is just like, yo, if he can do this to Oak Park, I, I want to do this. Um, so, you know, fast forward, you know, I've kind of got on the political side a little bit more, just understanding process and policy and, and have helped push bills for the capital. So it's something that I get, you know, at like 34 or 35, I said at 50, I want to do it, but I'm like 43 now and it's getting closer and closer. <laughs> so it's just like, oh, if I'm going to do this, I need, you know, I need to kind of start. So it is something I'm interested in. I mean, if all the cards are, are, are laid how they should be by the time I'm 50, it'll definitely be something that I, you know, I, I, I check out. That would be awesome. We'll help you. Yeah. I, I don't know how that. much yeah. good we can do. You guys can all be in my cabinet. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll help Let's you. Do it. Yeah. Matt, never a disappointment. Always great to get you. Thank up. you guys for having Love me. Love that you were here. Uh, we will take a break. We will be back. Matt Barnes. Run it up. Run it back. Run it up. Run it back. Run it back. Run it up. Run it back. Run it back.